can mixing up your diet or varying your food intake to, with different patterns help with weight loss? One new study suggests that it might, and this type of this is the type of study that that really kind of gives hope to people who have tried different methods of losing weight and not been successful. It gives hope because it shows different types of dietary interventions can work in different ways and changing things up can also have added benefit. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I thought this was a really interesting study, mainly for that reason, that it's one of the few studies that shows like a certain sequence of dieting having additive effect, which was really interesting. So this paper was published in the journal Nutrition, and it's called Sequential Diets and Weight Loss, Including a Low-Carbohydrate, High-Fat Diet with and Without Time-Restricted Eating. It was done by this group in Canada, the Wharton Medical Clinic. It's an interdisciplinary bariatric clinic with multiple locations in Southern Ontario. And so they had this pilot program in 2017, which was basically a low carb intervention that eventually transitioned to low carb with time restricted eating. Now, here's what I find really interesting about this study is it was a fixed sequence. All the patients started, or most of the patients started with weight management with a calorie restricted diet. So 40% carbs, 30% protein, 30% fat at a 250 calorie deficit. And then at some point, and this was up to um, the patients themselves, at some point they transitioned to a low carb diet. So how long they were in that initial phase wasn't really controlled. Then they would transition to a low carb diet where they were initially instructed to have less than 100 grams of carbs, but the paper said many chose the more restrictive version of less than 25 grams of net carbs um, with greater than four ounces of protein at each meal recommended. And then after around the fourth fourth visit, again, it was really up to the patients themselves, they introduced a 16-8 time restricted eating. So on the one hand, this is a great study for this program, this exact sequence, this flexibility of deciding when the patients changed. But you can't say that any one diet was more effective than the other. All it did was, was analyze this sequence. So what did they find? Well, on average, the people in the weight management group lost about three kilograms. Then when they transitioned to the low carb group, they they lost about 4.4 kilograms. And then when they added time restricted eating to that, they lost 3.6 kilograms. So each group on average continued to lose weight. And that corresponded to 2.8% in the initial phase, 3.3% of their weight for the low carb group and 3.6% for the low carb eating. Now, that's really interesting in and of itself because it, what it shows was on each step they continued to lose weight. Would they have plateaued if they didn't transition? Did they already plateau? We don't really know that information. But what I find really helpful is showing that as you add just something as simple as going from calorie restriction to a low carb diet without calorie restriction, you continue to lose weight. And then adding time restricted eating can help you lose even more weight. So very interesting. And then when they they, they really kind of narrowed in on this group that loses more or less than 5% of your body weight. And that's because some trials show that losing more than 5% really helps with metabolic health, with blood sugar, with insulin, of course, as long as it's done in a healthy way. So focusing on that 5% weight loss, 37% and the initial group lost 5%. And then 37% in the second group. But remember, this was a group that already went through the first phase. So that was almost like an additional 5%. And then 39% in the last group. Okay, so another really important stat. I know I'm throwing a lot of stats at you. So hang on. Here come the last of the numbers. Of the group that did the weight management first, the the calorie restriction first, and transitioned to low carb, 22% who had already lost 5% in the calorie restriction lost an additional 5% on the low carb. Now that's pretty amazing to be able to lose an additional 5% after you've already lost 5%. And last stat, I promise, 45% who didn't lose 5% on the calorie restriction did on the low carb. Okay, so I just threw a lot of stats at you and kind of summarize this trial. Some of the take home points are change can be helpful, right? If you're uh, if you're stalled in, in, in one way, change it up. Right, adding time restricted eating to low carb helps people lose an additional three percent on average. That's pretty cool. If you think you've tried everything and failed, well, maybe you haven't. You know, trying low carb, trying low carb with time restricted eating, show that for those who didn't lose enough weight, forty five percent who didn't lose the the five percent of their weight 
did when they transitioned to low carb. And then also, what about higher protein, right? I like that the initial group, the initial calorie restriction group had 30% protein. We don't know exactly what they ate on the low carb, how much protein. It was recommended that they eat at least four ounces, but maybe even adding higher protein, low carb, time restricted eating would be another transition that would be beneficial potentially. So it, 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 it really kind of brings in this one size doesn't fit all, right? We've been saying that time and time again here at Diet Doctor. One size does not fit all. Find the diet that works for you. It's okay to to, uh, mix things up a little bit. And having a protocol like this where you initially lose weight with calorie restriction and then transition to low carb, I think could be beneficial because long-term calorie restriction is hard. Compliance is low. Um, you run the risk of reducing your resting metabolic rate of maybe losing lean mass along with your fat mass, but making sure you're getting enough protein and transitioning to low carb after some initial weight loss could be a beneficial approach because low carb has been shown to not reduce resting metabolic rate as much to not lose as much lean mass as a strict calorie restriction, um, higher carb diets. So making sure you get enough protein is also very important for that. And doing some resistance training adds even more to guarantee you're building lean mass. So I, I really enjoyed this study. I hope you do too. Um, again, it's not the highest quality of science and that we can't say low carb was better than calorie restriction. We can't say time restricted eating was better than any of those, but we can say that this sequence worked. It had additive effects for those who succeeded initially, even those who didn't succeed initially, it still had additive effects. So very interesting, good take homes. Uh, If you want to learn more about low carb diets, about higher protein diets, about time restricted eating, we've got plenty of guides at dietdoctor.com. So go ahead and go there and check those out. um, And let us know what you want to know more of. We're happy to to take your advice and and, and, um, make guides uh, and practical practical guides that are going to help you succeed in your healthy weight loss journey. Thanks a lot, everybody. Click the thumbs up and subscribe if this was helpful, and we'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.